Hey everybody, welcome to Altium Academy. I am your host, Zach Peterson. I am also a technical consultant for Altium. And today we're gonna to be continuing with a previous video that we did on parasitics in your PCB. Now in the previous video, we talked more about where parasitics arise kind of at the circuit level and a little bit about where they arise at the layout level. What we're gonna to do today is look at a few strategies for reducing parasitic capacitance. Now, parasitic capacitance is important at high frequencies. As your design gets more advanced, the parasitic capacitive coupling that you can have in the design can actually create noise coupling around different areas and that is something that that you would like to try and avoid. So we're gonna talk about some strategies for that. All right, everybody, let's get started. So just to quickly review, what is parasitic capacitance and how does noise coupling arise when it is present? So parasitic capacitance arises whenever you have an unwanted capacitance in your PCB. So let's just say we're looking at the surface layer of a PCB. This is my dielectric. And I have some copper up here. And I've got some other copper over here. Maybe it's copper poor, maybe it's something else. But I have some copper around here. Whenever there is two conductors separated by some dielectric, we have some capacitance between them. Now, sometimes if you look at some diagrams, you'll actually see a capacitor drawn like this between these two sections of copper. It does not mean that there is a literal capacitor there. However, we've basically formed a small capacitor here uh, between these two uh, sections of conductor. And so what that means is that, let's say if I you know, draw this over here just a little bit further, and let's suppose that I've got a, uh, an integrated circuit here, and um, this is basically the lead and it's coming out to some copper over here. You know, if this integrated circuit is sourcing some voltage here, and there is a potential difference between this point and this point uh, in the PCB layout, then it's possible for this integrated circuit to induce some signal over on this other conductor, and it's due to that parasitic capacitance. So how exactly does that induced current arise? Well, this is a displacement current. So if you go back to your Electronics 101 class, you will know that as soon as this copper is brought up to a positive potential, that it will start to induce some charge on this structure. So we'll have some plus Q and some minus Q here. And that charge Q is just equal to C, so whatever the parasitic capacitance is here, we'll just call it C sub P, multiplied by this voltage. How do we know that there's a current that's induced here, right? Because here we just have some charge, but a current is some change in charge over time. Well, if you go back to your calculus class, or if you just use the delta notation and take the time derivative of this, we know that the current is equal to the parasitic capacitance times the change in voltage over time. This is the mechanism by which this chip can induce some current on some other conductor in this system, and it's due to the capacitance between them. The reason this becomes more prominent at higher frequencies is because Let's say that uh, I want to calculate what the current is, and I know that this voltage is, let's say it's just a harmonic signal, right? So let's just say that my voltage is just uh, some, some amplitude times sine of some frequency times time. So if I take this derivative, I would essentially get something that is proportional to uh, C sub P times omega. Okay, so this is the proportionality sign, it's not equals to. But this tells you that the current that I get is going to be larger when the frequency is larger or when this parasitic capacitance is larger. So ideally, we would like to suppress all of that. We don't actually want that to happen because this is one of the mechanisms by which noise can couple from one circuit, which might be totally isolated over here in this portion of the layout, and some totally different circuit that plays no role in whatever is going on over here. The requirement here is to reduce the parasitic capacitance that arises in this area. So how exactly do we do that? Well, we've got a few levers that we can pull and they relate to the geometry, the material, 
Or a third mechanism that is sometimes not mentioned when we talk about parasitic capacitance is the location of your ground. Instead of just having you know, a PCB with no reference plane, let's say that we have a ground layer here. So what happens if we then have a ground layer down here below these two sections of circuit? Let's take a look. Okay, so I've redrawn my, uh, my little section of PCB here from the side view. Here I've got my copper on the top and I have some reference plane down here on the bottom. And let's again just suppose that there is a trace here and here we have two disconnected pieces of copper um, or at least they're, they're blocked from each other somewhere else in the system by maybe a high impedance or something like this. But they're essentially, uh, we, atten we intend for these two to be isolated. And they're sitting over uh, what would essentially be our ground reference. So let's call this GND. So between these two sections of trace, there is some capacitance here, but there's also some capacitance here. Okay, so this trace itself has some capacitance with respect to ground. Same thing here, this trace also has some capacitance with respect to ground. So we can call this C1 and we can call this C2. Now, because we have these two traces that are essentially uh, near each other and have some capacitance between them, we typically will call this the mutual capacitance. So generally when people are referring to parasitic capacitance, they're like referring to this. What are some strategies to eliminate this? Because when we want to reduce parasitic capacitance, the goal is essentially to make this go away and essentially not exist anymore. Most guidelines will just focus on the geometry here. They'll say modify the size of the conductors and modify the exposed cross-sectional area so that uh, you essentially will reduce this capacitance. The other option is to modify the spacing here. So if I modify the spacing by just taking this trace and picking it up and moving it over, then great. You've just reduced the mutual capacitance and reduced the parasitic capacitive coupling between these two uh, pieces of copper. That is by far the easiest way to do this if you have a PCB that you're designing, but you haven't built it yet, okay? Or you maybe haven't finalized the stack up or any of this other stuff, okay? So if you just take this, pick it up, move it over, that is the easiest way to reduce parasitic capacitance. And it's actually the easiest way to reduce crosstalk generally, is just space stuff out more. Another thing that you can do is if you actually can somehow increase the capacitance here and increase the capacitance here, you can actually increase the strength of the electric field going between this plate and ground and then this plate and ground. By increasing these capacitances, you'll have stronger coupling back to ground than you will between the two traces. One method that you could use is, again, you could adjust the geometry of the traces themselves, or you could take the ground and you could actually move it closer. I've actually seen this discussed in one engineering uh, set of engineering class notes that I actually found online. Um, I don't often see it discussed anywhere else. Um, however, this is a very effective method. You could just take this uh, ground plane, pick it and move it up. That's totally effective at reducing the mutual capacitance. So that's actually what I wanna focus on here because in a PCB layout, in a practical sense, that's the other lever that you have to try and reduce this C sub M value. So with this C sub M value, if we actually take that, we draw a graph, and we plot this as a function of spacing between the traces, and then we parameterize that as a function of height from the ground plane, what we'll actually get is we'll get something that looks like this. So this is what I would get with a small H value. Now, if I have a large, H value, I'll get something that looks like the green curve. So if I can bring in my uh, ground plane closer to my traces, I'll essentially take this curve that is my mutual capacitance as a function of spacing between these elements, and that curve will move down a little bit. So essentially, that would mean that I could take, let's say, something that has a large spacing, and if I'm at some limit of mutual capacitance that I can tolerate, then I could actually move stuff just a little closer together and still have that same level of mutual capacitance. So that's one way to think of it. The other way to think of it is to just say, hey, look, you can see it just goes down for a fixed value 
of S. Another lever that you have is to actually change D sub K. So the D sub K of the substrate will depend on uh, which material you use. So if you want to swap out the material, you can also modify these capacitances. And that's just using the simple elementary capacitance formula that you learned in your electronics class. Um, so I won't go into it here. So what should we do if we take this ground and move it closer, but one of these is a controlled impedance trace? That's actually a really important question because remember, if you take this ground and you move it in closer to try and eliminate this mutual capacitance, this trace impedance will then get modified. So remember, we might have like a target Z sub T right here for this trace. So if I take this ground plane and I move it in closer, this could get so close that the actual characteristic impedance or odd mode impedance, if it's a differential pair, of this trace uh, suddenly drops below the target impedance value. And so in that case, I would need to take this trace and I would need to make it thinner to compensate. So you can use the trace impedance calculator that uh, I presented in a different video. Um, you can go onto Altium's website and use one of those. Um, if you have Altium Designer or you just want to get a free trial of Altium Designer, you can actually get access to the Layer Stack Manager. The Layer Stack Manager has a really easy to use tool that allows you to play with these different values just to check when the spacing starts to get too small that you then violate your target impedance constraint. So your target impedance constraint might have like a plus or minus 5%, let's say, you know, I'm just kind of throwing out a number here, but let's say it's plus or minus 5% uh, variation that you can tolerate around this. You can actually check to see when you get so close that you then violate that and then figure out what trace width you need to use to compensate for that make sure you hit your impedance target. So now let's su suppose you're doing all of this. You've already taken your layout, you finalized it, you maybe you've even built the board and you've identified that there is capacitive crosstalk somewhere in the layout and you've identified the elements where there is too much parasitic capacitance. You then want to go through and modify the stack up to reduce that parasitic capacitance. What should you do? How do you deal with this trace width issue when you have, let's say, a differential pair? So that's going to be a topic for another video. I can actually show you how to do something like that in Altium Designer. And we're actually going to have an upcoming webinar with Altium where I'm going to show you how to do some of those techniques in Altium Designer. So pay attention to that and pay attention to uh, some future videos that we have coming up where we're going to look at what happens when you modify the stack up, what you need to do to, to the traces and things like that in order to make sure you continue to hit your impedance target and to make sure that the impedance that you think you're calculating is what you're actually calculating once you're inside the PCB layout. All right, everybody, thanks for watching this. Um, I know I've kind of gone on about this in a couple of videos, but this leads into an upcoming video that we're doing where we're gonna look a little more at parasitics in power regulators. So power regulators, even though they may not run at super high speed or super high frequency, they can also have this problem with parasitic capacitive coupling between different portions of the layout. So that's something we're gonna look at in an upcoming video. Stay tuned, hit that subscribe button, leave a like on this video, leave a comment, leave a question. We love getting your comments and questions. And last but not least, if you're gonna start modifying your stack up, who do you gotta call? Don't forget to call your fabricator.